Welcome to the Business Legends Podcast, where we interview business leaders and entrepreneurs so that you can learn from their successes, become inspired, and meet the people that make change happen. I'm the host of the show, Reese Arlen, along with my co-host, Christian Webb. Say hello to the good people. Hello, hello. I'm super excited about hearing how this great gentleman across the table has adapted over his lifetime to become the extraordinary mm. everything that he is. Mike Metcalf <laughs> is our guest today. Mike is the <laughs> author of 12 Second Culture, and you can see it on screen for those of you recording video. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Man, yeah. we're, we're off to a good start. We're talking about funny NASCAR stories <laughs> and things like that already. We're getting cranked up. Mike here uh, is with Deck Leadership, yep. and uh, for our listeners, why don't you just give us a little rundown about what that is. Yeah, so we're, we're a team-building organization. Uh, we have the, the aim of trying to facilitate human brilliance, fulfillment, and connection with teams. And we do that through diversity, efficiency, culture, and kindness. That's that's extraordinary. So uh, don't sell yourself short here because we just saw the coolest video of all time. So <laughs> so what Mike does is he'll go into a company and yeah. then and then explain what you do with, with all that stuff. Yeah, so we, we'll take a race car on location. A lot of the companies that we're working with are like on the heat, like just about to do something big. Mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, Amerisource Bergen had to rebrand and combine. I think it was like eighteen different companies and try to figure out oh how do God. we how do we turn that into one. Yeah. Um. Somebody's going through a merger, or uh, they have to go launch a, a a groundbreaking pharmaceutical drug, and and they have to rally everybody in the organization for this effort. Mm -hmm. All right, so. We come in kind of beforehand and just it's almost like a group therapy session. Yeah. <laughs> but but it, it it's a it's a it's a shared experience mm -hmm. to get everybody on teams and turn them into a pit crew and have them actually pit a race car. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and so we'll we'll do that on their location. So whether that's an offsite in Austin, San Fran, we we're, we've been in Manhattan, we Miami, all over. And uh, they they get to pit the race car and then we go all kind of breakout session and it's one thing for me to go do a keynote to a company which I've done which Sean and I've done we've done and it's incredible but it's another thing when I'm referencing tire changing and different yeah. things and you just did it right right yeah, yeah. and so <clears throat> we get to have these just really beautiful moments of you know like man what does it actually truly mean to be a team mm -hmm. they say you know if you want to go um fast go alone if you want to go far go together we mm -hmm. we as pit crews we have to do both we have to go fast and far, yeah. right? We have to race 600 miles up the road here yep. really fast. Yep. And the only way you do that is together. And so when we talk about things like ownership, uh, failing quickly, arrival mindset, proving people right, and have baked those things into a live pit crew event, mm -hmm. then it sticks. I mean, there's calls that we did or events that we've done five, six, seven years ago, and people are reaching out and saying, hey, man, I, we, our team still talks about this, that's, right? And that's so, so what cool. we're trying to do through that is just create uniform language. Because yeah. when you think about, like, a football huddle yeah. or military, mm -hmm. it, we have the same thing in, in, in motorsports where we're saying very short sentences, broken sentences, little keywords, and everybody knows what it means, right. and everybody executes. And that's yeah. what you – that's what we, I think – more than anything I've been able to translate to business. Yeah. So where that efficiency comes in, but the quality is there. That is so cool. And and uh, I've, I've been lucky enough to be able to uh, to use a jack on, on a race car before. <laughs> and, and for those of you that have never done it, it is an experience. And, and you'd be surprised how much how much time, talent, skill, and strength it takes to, to do any, any single one of those things. So, so how did you come up with this idea? You know, so you were working in NASCAR for a long time and uh, doing different different things with the pits. Um, of course, we've spoken about about your NASCAR experience, but for our listeners, why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about that, and then let's get into how Deck Leadership came to be. Yeah, so try to try to do this in like a couple minutes. But, uh, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, look, college football player, App State, up the road here, mm -hmm. uh, had some injuries, but you know, just like all athletes, you don't ever you want to be told you can't go anymore. You don't right. want to just give up, right? right? So I kept training. The trainer I was working with, I had a workout in Indianapolis for some scouts. Um, <clears throat> he, the, that trainer ended up picking up Casey Kane as mm -hmm. a client, an old race car driver. And uh, he brought, he was like, hey, man, we got to get this guy in to train our pit crews, you know. And this was around the time where people, the, co the competition with the cars had just gotten so tight. Yep. You're looking for every edge you could get. 
And so Ben takes a job in the race team. I get back from this combine and he says, hey, why don't you come to the race shop? I want you to check this out. I'm like, what's a race shop? (laughs) (laughs) That's mind boggling to me because everybody that I know that's ever been involved with NASCAR has at least some love of motorsport. And then you're, and then in the meantime, you know, you're this super athletic dude and you're like, what's a race shop? Yeah. yeah. Like no clue. That's mind boggling. The first race I went to, I was working. Could you imagine? Like, no, my my first football game that I went to, I was, I was playing. No, I I can't imagine that. Yeah. It doesn't, it makes no sense. Right. But here we go. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so started developmental. Uh, the next year, I went to Red Bull Racing, and that was the first year that um, a team decided that the the pit crew would just be athletes. Mm-hmm. So I got to kind of get fast tracked on learning all the positions and how all of it worked. And then we had free time, so I just started. Hey, I want to go work in teardown or the parts room or uh, the I had a finance and banking major. Like, hey, can I help upstairs a little bit? So I just got super curious, and I learned literally every aspect of the team Mm -hmm. um and i think that was the best part of racing for me was just being a sponge and being able to just help but also to be able to learn and i knew i knew nothing so i had no ego with anything right and um so fast forward a little bit um sean and i start coaching truck series and xfinity series teams just because they're like whatever they're doing over at red bull like this is super cool like Mm -hmm. can you help kind of outsource and help some of our team so um that went well then chip ganassi racing was looking to make a change on their team they wanted to get rid of their pit coach because their performances just wasn't there and they took a, a shot on sean and i and in a few years we uh our pit crews were knocking off hendrick and gibbs and they're like how holy crap man yeah. how, how's this happening you know i wish uh I and wish that's an extraordinary and feat. i bet you just picked beast beast mother <laughs> people just yeah. going yeah i mean we, we did yeah so people act like how did that happen and 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 we we thought about it okay so we've gotten faster so we have speed mm-hmm. what were the things that help us get there and it came back to diversity efficiency culture and kindness and mm-hmm. that's the pillars of our company now and so we're able to tell an authentic story um, when we go and speak to people. Diversity was just getting people different from us. Like we did, we had never run a department. We knew how to do pit stops, but how to get other people to do them was a was a little bit of risk. So we just kind of opened the doors to have people that were thinking differently than us, different experiences in life, different things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had to do a lot of trust building to get people to like each other. So we did a lot of volunteering and just try to help create perspective. Um, it's kind of hard to. That's really cool. It's kind of hard to um, complain about, you know, the meal on your private flight when you just did Meals on Wheels the other day and delivered, you know, that's like so smart lunch and so true yeah. to to some, you know, people that are down and out in Cabarrus County, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, and then culture, we really invested heavily in. We knew we had to weaponize our culture. We knew that um, if people enjoyed the experience that they had each and every day, they would be excited to keep coming to work. Uh, we were asking them to work hard. We mm-hmm. knew we had to turn it around. You can't just say, hey, we sucked last year. Go be great next year. That's not a strategy. You have to inspire people to want to put the work in to get there, mm-hmm. right? And so I always just say, like, the routine's the reward. So we created with everybody, hey, what's a routine? What's this week look like that we could all be excited about? That's mm-hmm. going to be hard, but it's going to get us to where we want to go, right? Yeah. So we collectively build a good culture. And then we just would always say, man, we got to be kind to each other. We got to be kind to ourselves, take care of ourselves. If you're sick, stay home. If you got family issues, deal with them. Um, If it's your wife's birthday, go take her out to eat. You know, like don't stay late. You know, we we, uh, we, we built spreadsheets to just track important dates for all the people on the team so Mm -hmm. that they didn't miss them because when you're busy, you miss stuff. And so, um, I mean, we've saved a couple people from missing anniversaries and things yeah, like yeah. that. And so, you know, those are the moments where you build really cool. I, mean, I hear a lot of people talk about culture on this podcast show, but that's like, I yeah. did a lot of action items. Yeah. That, yeah. Like I'm, I've never heard anybody talk about the actual action items that, that built the culture. Build it. Yeah. I mean, and it, they did it in 12 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I wish. I'm going to yeah, say wish. 12 seconds. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. And, and you know, it's something as simple, practical, <clears throat> if you're a leader, um, and you have a team of people that work hard, just call them late at night, seven, eight thirty, when you're wrapping up your work. And generally, when the boss calls late at night, something's wrong, right? Mm-hmm. But if you just call thirty seconds, I promise you, I've done this, I've done it. People ten years ago are mm-hmm. like, dude, I still remember you called that first day. You called just to say thank you. Like mm-hmm. that was it. I just, hey man, we work hard, we put long days in. I appreciate what you bring to the team. I don't always have time to say it, but I really appreciate you. Just want to say thanks. Yeah. That that that's something. Um, you know that that's something that Christian and I both believe is that. We, we hire 
you know, for, for our company, we hire people that then become our friends, that then become our family. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we don't have, we don't have much turnover issues with our company. Like extended reason, family. You know? Yeah, 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 like, extended, yeah, like yeah, weird yeah. cousins, you know. Ooh, but. Yeah, right, right, yeah. yeah, you're happy to see them come, but also happy to see them go. <laughs> right, 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 right. Thanksgiving yeah. principles, Stay, you know? Right, right, right. That's it. That's yeah, it. So. Um, so, so then, so you're doing all of that, and then how do you, how do you come up with this amazing idea of of bringing, you know, basically making making uh, you know C corp executives uh, pit crews type of thing? Yeah, so where so does that come from? We we had put together. Um, Back in the Red Bull days, mm -hmm. Toyota had a uh, at, so in the the Las Vegas Convention Center, mm -hmm. a huge kiosk uh, set up and asked to bring like a cut up of a race car mm -hmm. and just let people experiment with the with the pit gun. Right, and we just were able to see how excited people were. Mm -hmm. Like they had, you know, there's all this stuff, new cars that aren't out yet, interactive. But everybody just there's a line for people <laughs> that like they wanted. Yeah, man, let me yeah. try that gun thing. You know, yeah. and um, and then it kind of jump forward we're at ganassi racing we're we're our teams are turned around and we put together an event um in orlando um th with the team to do something like what was, this was initially our first kind of pit crew team event mm -hmm. and uh it sean and i built the whole thing out and uh it just remember being flying back that day saying man it'd be cool if we could do this ourselves one day yeah. just kind of like eh, you know man mm -hmm. it'd be fun and then here we are this is what we do now so yeah. uh mm -hmm. and, and in between we were able to get on some really cool podcasts uh skill soft and leap gen just really helped us leap uh we got in front of chief learning officers of some big companies big pharmaceutical companies that were like super intrigued having off sites that year like hey we need to get you guys to come speak and come do that same thing that you were talking about for mm -hmm. us um, and then that's just led to other introduce, uh, introductions from, from other peers. And so now we have, uh, you know, now I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, yeah. I kind of turned, I retired essentially from NASCAR last year. Yeah. I just got back from California, actually received the crew member of the year award wow. for 2024 for NASCAR diversity awards. That's awesome. Um, and it was, you know, as a black man in motorsports, yeah. there's that obvious, like, you know, just trying to help create more opportunities for minorities and people of color, but in, in women. But what I think the diversity part was, was, uh, was able to do, pull together a uh, production day with Kevin Hart and some of his oh, that's friends cool. oh. to turn them into pit crews in June. Oh my uh, God, work. that's cool. So <laughs> that's that, cool. That's actually going to on the wall for that. That's gonna, yeah. Oh, it was literally the worst pit stop I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, my God. I can't, it'll, I'll send it to you guys. Oh, it, please, oh gonna, God, dude. Gonna, please God, dude. It's going to air in, uh, in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then an immersion tour for some... Uh, young women that are engineering majors that want to be, I mean, I'm, I still think uh, it'd be cool one day to see like the first female crew chief, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that you need to do best as a crew chief is multitask. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that uh, have kids know that our, our, our uh, wives are, they, <laughs> can multitask. they are, the, they are the absolute yeah, you know I mean? so I'm like, undisputed I, champions. I just want to yes. see it. Cause yeah. I, think, I think it'll be great. You what know? do you, uh, what do you, not to put you on the spot, but what do you feel about them being on the pit crew itself? Like the, the, the people who are actually doing the work. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a few, uh, female tire changers. That's a, probably the best position. Mm -hmm. We talked about that Jack just mm -hmm. being like, too uh, heavy. it's, it, it's not necessarily, it's too heavy, but it's just, but it, you have an it, advantage of your 400 pounds of jack diesel yeah, muscle. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, yeah. The, if you're a lot of the jack people yeah. are, yeah, they're yeah. they're too they're too 20 in north. Yeah, and yeah. and some generally a lot higher than that. Yeah, you, same thing with fuel. This can's 100 pounds, and you yeah. got to manhandle it. Right. Um. I, that's what I did. I was 200 now, but I was 220. When so I there's did some. That. So there's some competitive females on the tires. Yeah, there's yeah. So the gun, you know, the gun's a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. You're you're having to kind of pull wheels. You don't yeah. have to carry or put the wheels in. Yeah, I never really paid attention to gender on teams before on yeah. the pit crews, but yeah. I've never even thought about that. I just yeah, I, there's they're all few, wearing outfits. I never looked, you know. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Wearing helmets, so yeah. Right, you know. There's two two Briannas and then Delanda. Yeah. Um, Delanda's at track house. That was yeah. the last team. I we was just with. went to the F1 race in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, back in November. November. Yeah. Yeah, I guess sure. that's not just. It's yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. A little while time, ago. man. Right. Time. Mm -hmm. But even in the IndyCar series, you're starting to see more more females. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So we want to go talk to uh, who's the F1 race in more uh, Concord. Canapolis, Haas, Haas, Haas. 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 Yeah. Haas. Yeah, yeah, we want to go say hey to Haas. We want to interview him. Like I, we didn't know he existed. Oh yeah, we I went that there. There's an actual but, yeah. person named Gene Haas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We went yeah. there, and yeah. I was like, uh, I was like, there's a F1 team in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. well, it's kind of crazy. Right our house, like, like, yeah, twenty minutes away. Yeah, yeah. The, the the only American 
uh, Formula One team is 20 minutes away from where we live. Right. You know? so right. kind of, if you know them, let, 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 let's, let's yeah, get yeah. It's hard to get a hold of. I can reach out. Gun, so I don't know Gene Haas, but Gunther Steiner is the oh team. Oh, my they're, God. That is my dream. So he was, he was our yes. boss at Red Bull. Yeah. So Red Bull Racing on the NASCAR side. Yeah. And then he got really good at sourcing components. Mm-hmm. And that was how he got Gene to get into F1 because mm-hmm. – he was like, hey, I can save you a lot of time and money on the infrastructure because I can yeah. source components for you. We don't have to make everything. Mm-hmm. We don't have to start from scratch, basically. Mm-hmm. The like, man that knows kinda, everyone. We yeah. kind of like hit the ground running. <laughs> yeah, he, we'll talk offline about Gunther. Oh, please. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't wait to hear some stories about him because, you know, all of him that I know is from, of course, seeing his interviews and, of course, Drive to Survive and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. But um, he just seems like... Yeah. I don't know. I, I can. I can. I feel like I see his personality behind this. So, so you had yeah. mentioned moving into entrepreneurship now. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk some about some of your choices in entrepreneurship, or um, yeah, yeah, it's the top um, secret, or <laughs> no, no, that's the top secret. It's just um, you know, it's for for anybody that's ever been there. It's a little scary, right? Like you're sure. leaving, you know, almost two decades worth of uh, credibility with. And, and with that comes salary and status. Mm. So to say, eh, I don't need that. That yeah. I worked so hard it's to like, get. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. and then January rolls around and you're <coughs> like, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing came in. You yeah, know? Like, this is this is real for sure. Um, yeah. and it's uh and it's a betting on yourself. And it's either you believe in what you're doing or you don't, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so I believe in in Doug leadership and Sean and the message that we have. And so mm-hmm. um, that was definitely a leap of faith. And, you know, there it's open doors. Like I said, some production stuff. There might be some documentary kind of things down the line that yeah. I could dive into. So I've got a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Um, and then just locally, things like uh, Rally Pickleball mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, doing some, like, you know, different investing. And um, it's uh, – yeah, who I, I think it'll work, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and if it doesn't, you have plenty of experience to do whatever you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I could I could dive back into racing. Yeah. Uh, at some point, I've I've done uh, been on several boards locally, nonprofits. Yeah. Um, so even if it was to get in the nonprofit space, yeah. um, I've got options. But right now, yeah. I think I've spent so much in my last decade trying to help fuel everybody else's dreams. Mm-hmm. I think just taking a couple years at least Time for yours. to to yeah. yeah fuel mine. I think would be would be nice. Respect. So, Respect. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when we started this podcast like four years ago, it feels like I think it was four years ago. Six, um, 2018. Six, yeah, wow. but we had a co- yeah, yeah. COVID. COVID, 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 yeah. COVID yeah. Right, Four right, real people right, years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same as uh, like all the college athletes right now that are yeah. on their sixth year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. So we started. Uh, so we started the podcast for the exact reason you just said, right? Like yeah. we uh, we knew entrepreneurship was a tough jump. I mean, because yeah. that's what what's what we did. Like, I mean, right. I went from being the VP of sales and marketing for a drone company to not having a salary ten yeah. days later for the next six months. Yeah, and that's a. Oh, you know that it hurts. Yeah, um, and it's crazy to even think yeah. of because it's so long yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, it's so long ago. And yeah. so we started it because we wanted other business owners to tell their truth, like not not yay entrepreneurship. Like, oh, it yeah. sucks. It's good. It's decent. It's it's made me a millionaire. It's made me broke. Yeah. Like whatever your today, story today is. is the best day of my life, and also it is the worst day. Of my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. yeah. entrepreneurship. Yeah. So right we did there. the stories, yeah. and believe right. it or not. We even I feel like we've inspired a lot of people to make decisions, whether so, it be yeah. yes or no. I hope so. Yeah. Um, that's all y'all's stories. That's what it, that's, that's what I think they lean towards. Yeah. Is helping people make decisions on this stuff. I, I think so. Like our our book kicks off. Uh, and I want to talk about this too for okay. sure. The 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 thing when we just started putting stuff together, the fact that the majority of the heart attacks in this country happen on Monday mornings, mm-hmm. like wow. was mind blowing. Mm-hmm. And it was, it's like 60%, isn't it? It's yeah, like, yeah, it's a high yeah, number. Yeah. You know? It's like a lot. It's like enough to say this is a trend. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, two thirds of people uh, <laughs> said that they would trust a complete stranger over their boss. Yeah. It's so we just fair, started though. seeing stuff like this and like we have to do something, right? Mm-hmm. To impact the greater work culture, the leadership. Because this is a direct reflection of leadership. For mm-hmm. sure. Like if, if, if I. I'm stressed out to the point that where I'm driving in Monday morning and I'm starting, my heart's starting to not mm-hmm. work right. That means your heart needs to find something else. For right? sure. And you so hate you, you yeah. hate what you do. And, and, and then if you hate what you do long enough, you'll start to hate yourself, others. And so part of this like journey for me for entrepreneurship and wanting to inspire other people to do it is, is like, if you don't like what you're doing, find something that you do like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Find something that you're passionate about. So find something that, uh, makes you angry or frustrated and go try to fix that problem. Mm-hmm. And as you solve 
problems for others, like stuff like money and all these yeah. other things that we think we need to focus on, just start taking care of themselves. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I think people really like overestimate how, how, how I mean, underestimate how long, I guess I don't know the right, the right word for this actually, but whatever it is, they, they think that it takes longer than it actually does to replace a mediocre salary. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like a 30 to $70,000 salary, you can replace that in months. Right. Mm -hmm. Like six right. months, you can, that could be gone. Yeah, like you're, you're you're equal to that immediately, and you're you're your own boss. Right. Like we own a marketing firm, obviously, and then uh, we also just opened a commercial painting company. Wow. Um, the commercial painting company is already on pace to. It's been open for what, three months. Three months. And we're already on pace on based on just our basic sales to make like you know hundreds of thousand or something. And it's like we we put eighty hours into it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's like it's simple, but it's scary. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I hope I wish more people would see that. Yeah, I, I wish more people like and, and a part of that, <clears throat> a part of the uh, thank God success for the for the painting company for us has been um, we've we've learned how to start a business. Right. So we, we have a lot of business foundational skills. And that's what, you know, I hope our listeners get out of out of this show, particularly yeah. is learning yeah. skills. And like, you know, you, you look at Christianized partnership like we own now three businesses together. And we're still best friends somehow. I hate him. I hate him. You know, yeah, he's a terrible it's person. It's getting closer and closer. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I was also the best man in his wedding, you know? Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, you know. But I might uh, not be the best man in his. Right, right. You know, I mean, I'll have to sucker somebody to marry me first. But, you know, we'll figure, we'll figure that out as we go along. But, um, no, I, I wish people, um, and I don't think entrepreneurship is for everybody, right? Sure. Yeah. But I wish that more people that would make great entrepreneurs and great leaders would uh, – live beyond mediocrity, right? Mm -hmm. I, I wish that they would kind of accelerate their pace, so to yeah. speak, and yeah. fulfill their potential. But yeah. um, so let's talk about 12 Second Culture. So um, this is after deck leadership, right? Or kind of the same time? The, yeah, that we had already started speaking and uh, and the, the, the first few <laughs> sessions I thought were terrible. Okay. You know? Well, but, clearly they weren't though, because yeah, they gained well, traction. Well, I mean, in the very first, so then, Full circle, we're back to Indianapolis speaking right. at the NFL Combine. So yeah. this is like we're we're racing started for me was a workout in Indianapolis. And yeah. Then speaking in football, and then you go back. To, that had to be eerie. Yeah, it was weird. I was yeah. like landing there, thinking like this is maybe the start of something different. And yeah. I'm in the same airport and hotel. This is wild. <laughs> you were in you the know? same hotel yeah, too. Like, oh, I would have stayed somewhere different. Like, That'd have freaked me out. Like, man, There's no way. Crazy. This is like this is crazy. The Matrix. Oh my God. So that would have freaked me out. I'm not gonna lie. Um. But man, the the thing that happened that was really crazy was, so are you football guys? You know, okay. Me, yes. He doesn't know anything. I, about I know what he knows. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. Yeah. So and I'm a Panthers fan, so, so we you spoke, understand. Yeah. yeah. This is rough. <laughs> uh, we we talked to every team there. Okay. It was a huge ballroom. Yep. And uh, it was people from the the Chiefs, the Packers, um, the 49ers, and the Patriots, and the like. Uh, was it the Saints that really stuck around to download us even more? And it was mm -hmm. interesting because those are teams that win often. Yeah. You yeah. know, and it was like they, they wanted to download us for everything. And so we ended up racing. We were racing Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And those guys said, hey, we want you to come come speak to our, to us. And yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, whatever. Kansas, you know, because I'm still thinking like this is me now. Now, like, of course, they would want you to. But then right. I'm just a gas man pick crew coach. Right. Well, we're there a few minutes. The phone rings. We get into the human performance lab, and they're like, "Hey, the big man wants to see you guys and talk for a little bit." Well, I'm like, "Who's the big man?" They're like, "Coach Reed." Andy Reed. Oh like, my God. I'm like, "What? How does he know we're here?" Like, I'm like, "Okay, maybe this is a bigger deal than I thought." Yeah. Next thing I know, he's asking me questions. I'm like, hey, "I got my laptop." So I pull up. We're looking at pit crew breakdowns. We're talking about ideology for how to make things faster. Learned something incredibly fascinating about them at the time. He was wanting. They had no Super Bowls. Mahomes wasn't a starter yet. Oh, wow, so this has been six or seven years ago. Then. Yeah. yeah, so he was thinking about how do I get better at reading the game but then listening to the coordinators. Mm -hmm. So what he had started doing was was reading a book but then listening to a different audio book and trying to comprehend both. Oh, my God. And now he's gotten good at it, so he goes through two books at a time. And so oh. when you're around people that can – I could not imagine doing that. That's yeah, yeah. crazy. It's pretty wild. Yeah. And then he eventually got a little antsy and was like, God, oh, man, I'm loving this conversation. I, uh, I, got, dinner, I got dinner with Garth Brooks here in a little bit. <laughs> I just, I don't want to be late. And we're like, yeah, you should go. Yeah, you should definitely go. <laughs> should, like, yeah. yeah. We're, uh, yeah, we're, yeah. You should yeah. actually invite us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 As, in, as in Garth we? Brooks? As in, like, country music legend yeah. Garth Brooks? Yeah, that guy. Bye. Yeah, see, see, you, you, yeah, enjoy that. We can come back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, um, but that really, like, fuel, fueled our 
we're like, man, maybe we do have a message. Yeah. Like we just mm-hmm. sat with the head coach. The big GM. man. Yeah, the, the big, big man. Right. Yeah. And so that just kind of gave us, you know, um, <clears throat> started jotting stuff down. Oh, man, all right. So that presentation got us that kind of information mm-hmm. or, it, uh, you know, connection. What if we like worked hard at this? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so we just started building presentations, reaching out to people locally. Hey, if you got an offsite or a meeting, we'd love to hijack in 30 minutes and just kind of grew. So now Sean and I have probably like seven different workshops we do. Wow. We got the, the team. We got the book. We can do book club stuff. Mm-hmm. We've got like I've got clients that I do one on ones with. And so um, it's just kind of grown. And then the book has uh, has just been like a calling card for us. Um, yeah. The, several companies have gone through yeah. it. Yeah. You still got to sign it, by the way. Yeah, I'm not yeah, letting you. Sure. <laughs> how, how, how many sales you got? Sales, <laughs> man. I think so. We I'm going to check this on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. So it's not even on Amazon. We okay. haven't okay. even like actually like launched it yet. Yeah. Oh, so okay. we've just been we selling it edition, through yeah. our, our website. And then just as we speak to people, um, mm-hmm. they... You know, we go to we're in Florida last month, and they bought a hundred for everybody that was yeah. there. You it's know? crazy. It's 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 uh it's weird how books do this still because mm-hmm. you think it wouldn't still do it, but mm-hmm. they still have the effect. Like people are like, you got a book? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they read your book and they're like, dude, you had some really cool stuff to say in there. Well, it's hard to write a book. It's like entrepreneur. Yeah. I mean, it's like a little micro entrepreneurial project, right? Yeah. That comes from you. Like no one else can tell you how to do it yeah. or give you the blueprint of how. Mm-hmm. Um, I've tried like six times, so I know how hard it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's really, it's really yeah, hard. I get about yeah. halfway through, and yeah. I, I, get, I get my entire outline of it but done. Halfway, I get five pages. <laughs> no, 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 really, I, I've done an entire outline for Eight book. pages. And okay. then I've also gotten like 30 or 40 pages in, yeah. really sloppy. 12. And then I just like <laughs> falls apart. Just yeah. yeah, keep going, man. Or yeah. maybe combine them, figure out how to make yeah. different, different chapters. So, I'm, so I think I'm a ghostwriter individual. Okay, that's that, which is important. Um, so, <laughs> it's, it's good to know, right? Yeah, so, it's good to know. Uh, so, so tell us about Sean too. So I'm very, I'm very curious. He does the, he does everything. And why is he not here? And why is he not here? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so, I part of the entrepreneurialism is uh, I've just kind of <clears throat> said, hey, like I'm gonna kind of focus on this. I got two young kids. Mm-hmm. When you're leaving every weekend to a racetrack and they're One's on one foot and one's on the other saying, no, daddy, don't go. Why do you have to go again? Yeah, it's brutal, right? So um, and then my wife and I just, we had gotten to where we were. She's in private equity here in, at Ridgemont Equity Partners mm-hmm. here in Charlotte. And so she's busy. And so we just weren't connecting, spending any time together. So something uh-huh. had to change. Um, yeah. And so Sean's still with the race team, so he's okay. at uh, practice right now. Yeah, uh, busting his tail. <laughs> yeah. yeah so we won't hold it against him. Yeah, no, nah, he's here. in it, man. Yeah, he's in it full time, uh, mm-hmm. working, and uh, so he's kind of focusing more on. Uh, we're kind of like you guys, kind of the banter and mm-hmm. going yeah. back and forth. Um, uh, he's working with the team full time, but then also doing business development stuff, just kind of in the industry, mm-hmm. and then I'm more. External. External. Yeah. yeah. So and kind how, of divide and conquer a little bit. Yeah. yeah. How long have, have you known him? And I presume you met him through. Through, through racing. Yeah. We yeah. we were two of the, we were on the same pit crew in 07. Okay. Oh, yeah, so, you, so we met. Yeah. yeah. So we've been, yeah. And, and it was tough, man, because, you know, part of that was that we spent, we worked on the same teams in a, pretty much the same role since 07. So oh, wow. as of last year, it was a, I mean, we basically shared a desk for, 15 years yes you, you hope you get along at that yeah, point yeah. right right so now and now we're kind of finding a new normal yeah you know um he getting a lot of regards was my priority like, right that was who I, I spent more much more time with him than my wife kids and, and anything yeah. and so now it's a little bit different and so mm-hmm. we uh we had to navigate that and um you know we just kind of touched on it earlier um kind of outsourcing some of my leadership acumen by serving on boards was a way to kind of help fuel my entrepreneurial spirit because i was able to tap into a great network of people Mm -hmm. that were passionate about serving locally and whether that i mean that some of the i mean i'd I'd love to name some names but just some some incredible ceos and leaders in the community Mm -hmm. so that were mentoring Mm -hmm. me Mm -hmm. so i was thinking about this like whole business legends thing i was like well i'm not one i will be but yeah. oh only- no, you are certified as of right. Well, in about five minutes, sir, you are certified, and you wrote a book. You're already more legendary than us. You 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 got it done. Like, come on, man, give yourself some credit. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I uh, Marcus Smith over at SMI, Kristen Blinson at Hope Haven. Yeah. Um, He's naming the people that are going to be on our podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah Rick yeah. Elias at Red <laughs> Ventures. I mean, these are all people that have like Red Ventures. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, James Clayton at Rogers Builders. Oh. Walter Boston. He was a senior pastor of a church when he was 17. Yeah. So yeah. 
I'm going to be honest. A lot of people over Rogers Builders. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. The first painting company. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Stacy Cassio, Pink Mentor Network. You should definitely yeah. have her on here. She's yeah. a, been a mentor of mine. So That's awesome. I've, I've been able to just through like serving mm-hmm. locally on boards, be able to meet some incredible people. Yeah. And they have been Todd Bulo. They have been the oh, ones. Oh, Todd Bulo. <laughs> well, Todd yeah, Bulo is on I business love too. Todd yeah. Bulo, love yeah. Todd. So these are the people that have helped me take that leap. That mm-hmm. have been Rick. Hey, you like. Do you believe in what you're doing? Yeah. So then why are you still doing this other thing? Can you come back to it? Would it be there in two years? Yeah, probably. So then like, what the heck, man? Yeah, there it is. And I'm that's like, the words right there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so people. That's when mean, it starts. Yeah. Yeah. And that, so, that's the, I, I like I, not to be like, you know, drama queen over here or anything, but I, I think that's the moment that changed your life. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that moment when when somebody asks you the question and then the answer to the question is like, I have a fallback plan. Like, why not? And then you ask why not? And then. There is no answer. Here we go, baby. <laughs> like, go. That's it, right, you know? right, right. Yeah. yeah. And then partnership's important. So, I've, Sean, we can lean on each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, just like you guys have. So, when it comes yeah. to entrepreneurship, like, He's find find that network <laughs> and uh, and then find somebody that can help you get there. You yeah. Know? yeah. And, and it's, you know, anything's possible. I think the thing that scares people the most is not, and we say this often, it's not change. It's the, like, unintended like unknowns that come with it that mm-hmm. really scare mm-hmm. people people are we're built and wired to evolve and adapt yeah. right. and and but what we what we have right now is measurable yeah mm-hmm. it's like so you say it man so right now i know i got my 30 to 70 yeah. right but and if i take this leap i'm not going to have my 30 to 70 it's like but what if it turns into 300 yeah yeah and or, here's the other question if you've done it just it drives me insane because it, it's a it's a mental block but if you literally just think about it a little differently, do you think leaving and starting a million dollar business and running a team is going to make you less qualified for a higher position that you used to work in? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, you're going to be more even, qualified. <laughs> or right. even immediately. in the and here's the the one up to that that's that's kind of like a pessimism thing, but it's like mm-hmm. even if you fail, you right. know, even yeah. if you fail, like if I'm sitting across from you and you know we're hiring you mm-hmm. for whatever, being the pit crew chief of the of the master of the universe type of thing. And right. then you're like you're like, Yeah, I left because I wanted to start my own business and, and you know, these are the things that I've learned. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. oh, God. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. That is a wealth. Like, yeah. You know what not to do. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah and it's that's like, just as valuable. It, so I have a this is a telling a little too much, but I have no higher education, no college, no master's degree, none of that, right? Wow. Um, but I, I him and I own a company that's dealt with thousands of businesses we've built marketing plans executed on digital strategies built websites built entire brand launches yeah you think it'd make you think i'd have any trouble going to go get a marketing director position tomorrow no 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 no, no. nobody cares no. Yeah. please do it I'm and, if, and you. if you did <laughs> yeah. they would probably say uh we didn't get down all the way to education but we just you're overqualified <laughs> yeah well yeah exactly yeah. and that's why people i don't want people to be scared of that because yeah. it's like it makes yeah. you more qualified not less yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about the book. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So talk about the name, 12 Second Culture. So let's start culture. there. Yeah, yeah so uh, that's just that at the time the, the, the pit crew metrics have changed a little bit. Now yeah. you probably want to be under 10 seconds. Under 10, yeah. But, but initially 12. He don't know, he don't know what we're talking about. <clears throat> 12 was like, so it was like, yeah. hey, what, what is the culture of, of these people, these individuals that kind of live their lives 12 seconds at a time? Mm-hmm. And work in increments that are like two tenths of a second. Mm-hmm. And so what we were trying to do is just kind of make the connection. So the tagline says speeds the currency of business. Um, it's not big beating s- small anymore. It's just mm-hmm. fast beating slow. Right. Yeah. And so we live in the fast world and the pace we're experiencing right now is the slowest that it's ever going to be. Mm-hmm. Everything is only ramping up. Yeah. Right. And so we wanted to kind of get some buy in to the boardroom through our speed mm-hmm. kind of ideology yeah. um <clears throat> tell our story right just kind of some legacy stuff just to leave some stuff for the kids and people that are coming behind us um but then also in with kindness um we really do feel like um we could do a better job um just as a society of thinking outside of the silo thinking outside of our thing that we think that makes us good how do we think downstream how do we interact with other people in other departments and so um themes in the book are failing quickly um talk about the importance of not letting failure stop us or define us we talk about a rival mindset and how the saturn five <clears throat> when it launched i think it was 76 percent of its fuel was gone within the first minute or so and i don't know mm-hmm. if you've ever seen a launch like mm-hmm. for the first several seconds it goes nowhere right and it's just blowing just yep. It's, you can't even see because of the fire and the smoke. Mm-hmm. And I think 
kind of jump to entrepreneurialism, that's what it's like. Mm -hmm. That's what anything great's like. You're spinning tires and you're blowing energy and man, I, there's zero in my bank account. I don't have any clients. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I don't know how we're gonna make it. And then all of a sudden it moves. And then all of a sudden it moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's gotta go 62 miles just to get outside the Earth's atmosphere. But then right. there's even more beyond that. <clears throat> But you never get there if you don't just keep pumping that fuel away at the start, right? So mm -hmm. it's just different things like that. But that even comes to each and every day. The way we start our day, a lot of times, set the tra trajectory for it, right? Yeah, and for so sure. We we've sent people out like, mm -mm, nope, back to your car, come back in again. Wow. Like, let's come back. That goes back to that some, culture <laughs> thing, though, yeah. too, because you can tell. You, you know? can tell. Yeah, yeah. You like this ain't this person's day. That's okay, and we can deal with that, and we can talk about it later. But what I do need you to do is come in with some energy yeah. and some appreciation and gratitude, and find it because right. it's somewhere. Yeah, we all have it. Um, <clears throat> talk about about diversity. You know, a little bit about just getting beyond the optics of it. You know, if you have uh, six yellow mustangs 12 red ones uh some black ones some blue ones a couple different engine ones like do you have a diverse car collection no you no just have a bunch of mustangs. mustangs right yeah yeah so it's bigger than just what it looks like right right and so trying to dive down into that and help people understand like do you have a diversified stock portfolio or retirement plan right yeah why okay it mitigates risk it tech's down healthcare is up that's all we're looking for on our teams, right? How do mm -hmm. we mitigate the risks that we have? So just trying to unpack some very, very just kind of simple things that we did, you yeah. know, to try to help build that that connection and that brilliance. And yeah. um, that's what the book's all about. Like how, how, and then we leave several things like, hey, here's things that you can do, right? To mm -hmm. just create healthy culture to where people don't want to take sick days. They're like, mm -hmm. no, 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 I want to go to work. I want to be in the office because what we do matters. And I know that people care about not just the work I do, but me as a person. That That's such a different and important mindset. You know, it's like if you if you look forward to going to work, then, you know, they say, oh, you don't work a day in your life. You're having fun or whatever. But at the same time, it's like if you if you look forward to what you do, like yeah. the, the the places that you'll go are so much further than than wherever else you would be left off type of thing, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, man, I really commend you for this, and I mean that, um, because, It is you know, a little skinny, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, this is about this is about 18 times longer than Christian's best efforts, so, you know? <laughs> so, uh, we'll no. We'll make the next one a little fatter. Yeah, there you go. And yeah, 10 seconds. Go. And 10 yeah. seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Next, the, the sequel yeah. will be 10 seconds. Yeah. That's cool. Right. But, you know, you, you caught my eye immediately with the with the uh, title, and I can't, I can't wait to read it, um, but... You know, I, and I think that now more than ever, you know, you were you were attacking an environment that, admittedly, is it's not a very diverse environment. You know, mm -hmm. the the pit crews and and NASCAR and racing in general is not a very diverse environment. So, yeah. um, I I think that you know what you're doing is needed now more than ever before, and you know you got the track record to show it. So, I appreciate that, um, man. I'm really looking forward to lunch with you. Um, so yeah. let's go ahead and get out of here. But before you go, uh, we always like to sign off with a. Um, with a fun or funny question or try to, and this is where I stall, but I think I got a decent enough question for you this time. Um, what is your favorite, uh, I'm sure you've, over the years, you've worked every position on, on the pit crew. Yep. What's your favorite position and why? Mm. I mean, probably just what I did. Yeah. Which was Gas man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I've jacked in a race. I've never changed tires in a race. Okay. Um, but carried Do you think tires. you could? Do you think you could? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I'd practice. So, I mean, that was the thing. Like, I, I would, no one would know it, but right. I would just late at night or early in the morning, like, I would just go grab a gun and just go through mm -hmm. patterns just mm -hmm. so that I could coach it. Mm -hmm. Just so, and then, mm -hmm. then I would try to, I'd look at film from other guys and see right. how they were sitting. And then I would go back through that just so that I could speak authentically to what I was trying to communicate mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. And when they gave me feedback, I could say, okay, I know what he means. Right. Was Sean I know what your she backup means. on that position? Or? <laughs> So Sean was a jack man. Oh, so man, we, yeah. we worked together for on the same crew for seven years. Oh, wow. Me fueling him jacking. And yeah. So, so how many times were you upset he didn't get the car up fast enough? Uh, well, he used to try to race me to try to get the <laughs> car up, before, like, right as I was trying to plug it in to screw me up. Like, and, and we do this, like, you know, I mean, there's millions of dollars on the line, and we're just goofing off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a pit crew story right there. That's what it's like. Quick, yeah. Yeah. And then, and and then he'd try to, like, drop it before I could fill it. And I'd be like, yeah, go for it. I'll be done. Yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. And so I'm having to race the car out to get it full. I mean, we just had fun, man. Wearing them out, though. No, no I mean, it was both. I mean, we both pushed that's each other. And that's why that's why we're both, I think, you know, able to look back on our time and say, man, we, we were, you know, 
without that push, you don't always give it as much as you could, right? Mm-hmm. But I knew mm-hmm. that he was always going to give it 100%, so I was like, well, shoot, I'm tired, but... 101, baby. I know, yeah, yeah. I know Sean's going to go hard, so I got 2-2, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would say fueling... He's super swole, too. <clears throat> yeah, he's a big guy. Swole guys, he's, swole yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're like, just, was that a picture you guys were just trying to show your forearm meat? I'm like, I don't know, that's just how it worked. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is <isn't> correct. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'd say fueling, it was... Um, I could be able to do my job, but then also kind of mm, observe what else was going around me and right. just help. Yeah. I think I, I kind of was like a natural kind of like coach position. Mm-hmm. So it kind of helped me yeah. transition. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, uh, Mike, thank you so much. For those of our, our listeners, 12 Second Culture, make sure to check it out. Um, deckleadership.com, is that where we get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deckleadership.com. Well, well yeah, for sure. There's a separate link. 12 second culture book.com but okay. yeah if you go to deck leadership.com yeah we'll put it in the we'll put it in the yeah, comments yeah we gotta yeah, check it out gotcha. so Boom. very good all right man let's have lunch thank you so much